All right, is a Supreme Court showdown on the way? Let's bring in tonight's power panel. Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz also written an overview and intro to the Mueller report, which will debut on the New York Times bestseller list. And Fox News contributors Doug Schoen and Guy Benson. And by the way, I found out tonight also that, Doug, you were a student. Absolutely. Of Professor a terrific student. Well, I'll take it any way I can Okay, get it. so we have our legal eagles. The New York Times says this tonight. Under the headline, Alabama aims squarely at Roe, but the Supreme Court may prefer glancing blows. They say because the Roberts Court tends toward incrementalism, it is not likely to want to take on a direct confrontation with that precedent. I Professor. think that's exactly right. The federal district court has no power to do anything but strike this down because they're bound by Roe versus Wade. The same thing is true of the Court of Appeals. And so the question is, will the Supreme Court grant certiorari in this case? They won't. You need four for certiorari, five to reverse. They won't grant certiorari unless they have five. Kavanaugh and Roberts believe in mm -hmm. the power of precedent, although they personally believe in a right to life and are against a woman's right to choose, they won't upset uh, many, many year old Supreme Court precedent. Well, and it's interesting because there are a number of other states talking about doing similar things, chipping away at abortion rights. Uh, and in response to that, Ralph Northam, who is a physician and yep. the governor of Virginia, and you saw his controversial comment we've been yep. debating there, um, he says this my veto pen is ready and full of ink. He, he's daring them to try it in Virginia, well, but he's still got this controversy uh, yeah. that, you know, my advice rages. to Governor Northam would be to lower his voice on this issue and a lot of issues. But my take on this, per Allen, is that the real challenge is politically, because the suburban swing voters who went for Trump 2016, moved to the Democrats in 2018 in the midterm, most of them, 70-odd percent, particularly the women, are pro-choice. This is an extreme measure, as Pat Robertson said. It will help the Democrats in 2020. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the best news that the Republicans get would get would be to lower the tone, get this knocked out, declared unconstitutional, and run a campaign on the economy, on peace that now currently exists, and our strength in the world not, not abortion. Absolutely. Okay, so, Guy, this is what Senator uh, Dick Blumenthal, of course, a Democrat, has to say about it. He says, Alabama reaches a new, deeply unconstitutional low. Abortion's not a crime. It is a medical procedure, a constitutional right. And above all else, a choice for women to make without government interference. We'll never stop fighting for women to have control over their own bodies. Guy, you saw just about every 2020 contender on the Democratic side went after this today. Um, is Doug right that it could actually backfire in Republicans next Next year. Uh, I think potentially it could because of the lengths to which the law goes. I'm proudly pro-life. It's one of my biggest issues why I'm a conservative. But there are certain elements of this bill, now the law, although it will be thrown out in Alabama, that I am uncomfortable with in terms of practical standpoint, in terms of implementation, uh, in terms of how you would enforce it. But I think overall, uh, I'm in favor of measures that would protect the sanctity of human life earlier on. Uh, I think, you know, the, the quote that we just put up there from Senator Blumenthal talks about women having the right to control their own bodies. I think we all agree with that. The question is, when does someone else's body start to get rights? At what stage mm -hmm. does a new person exist that is entitled to constitutional and legal protections? It's a tricky one. And, you know, for all the backlash talk, Alabama has gone in one direction. We've seen some of these heartbeat bills as well. But as we saw in the map that Trey highlighted earlier, a lot of other states have gone in the opposite direction with bills that are at least as radical and extreme in the opposite direction. And I'm struck really by, I know our distinguished other guests here are taking a legal and political vantage point. I want to talk about the media very briefly. The degree of alarm and brow furrowed uh, horror being expressed in the tone and the uh, volume of the coverage over the Alabama statute is really quite different than what we saw, whether it was in New York or Oregon or some of these other states that have imposed really draconian, frankly, pro-abortion laws, because I think, by and large, the media has its thumb on the scale on this issue in a major way. But so does the American public. Yeah, and, I think, and I think, Shannon, I think some of them would it's admit It's the criminalization that. of a doctor's behavior and the potential Right, and it's not the 90... woman in Alabama, but potentially 99 years in a felony for yes, a doctor. That's, for that's what I was alluding to. That's my answer mm -hmm. to Guy. Look, yeah. Roe versus Wade was a gift to the Republican Party mm -hmm. because it took the abortion issue out of politics where pro-choice wins over pro-life 
almost everywhere except in a small number of states. And what the Republicans are doing now, foolishly, is trying to give that gift away. Mm. And I don't so agree with that. I think Americans basically today support a woman's right to choose. Maybe not in the last month, maybe mm -hmm. uh, not at yeah, the extremes, but most Americans. Yeah. A, and certainly nobody wants to see doctors in prison. Yeah, and Guy, to your point, and in some of these polls we talk about, I mean, there's still a pretty even split across America when you ask people, do you describe yourself as pro-life or pro-choice? And then when you start to ask them about time limits, first trimester, second trimester, I mean, there are plenty of people uh, in the country who are actually for limits when you really press them on the time frames and viability and those kinds of things. Well, the vast majority are, as a matter of fact. So I think the, thir the first trimester is tricky. And I think most Americans do, based on the poll, support a woman's right to choose in the first trimester. But when you start actually looking at, you know, mid-trimester or late-term abortion, uh, the numbers drop off a cliff. And you've got super majorities, including a majority of pro-choice people who turn against abortion in those circumstances. And and so while Alabama's law, certainly, I think it's you can't make it more stringent than they have. And I don't think that would really garner support, probably even a majority of Alabamians. Right. Uh, and, and making new restrictions, bringing the American legal system in line with even Western Europe would be a significant increase in human rights and a massive improvement over the current regime, uh, unfortunately, in a lot of states. Yeah, Look, and so I'm, much of the progeny that came from Roe really went into viability. And okay. that is changing over time because of medical and scientific advances. People are seeing 4D and 3D images of these unborn babies that um, they look at them and it, and it looks like a child to them. And they, right. we see babies Look, surviving Democrats in 20, 30, 24 weeks. Democrats lose on third trimester abortion. Guy is right. If the Republicans debate that in the election, they will have a winning issue. But as Alan was saying, if it's pro-choice versus pro-life in the context of this legislation, it's curtains for the Republicans. And it's not going to win in court either. Well, that's the point, too, that if you're going to try to get Roe versus Wade narrowed, you have to do it very incrementally. Mm -hmm. That way you have a chance of getting Kavanaugh, you have a chance of getting Roberts. Yeah. Otherwise, you're only going to get a small number of justices. Yeah. So every consideration, political, judicial, legal, moral, they all point in favor of not having the kind of Alabama extreme right. statute, which More is nuanced. a loser. And there are several other things the court is going to be considering about these cases that they're going to take up, but which are much more incremental from other states. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you to all of our sure. experts. Great thank to you. have you tonight. Congratulations like on the book, by the way, Shannon. Thank you, Guy Benson. I brought a prop. And I'm going to get a grade from <laughs> Professor Dershowitz hey, afterwards. Plus. Thank plus. you. There you go. All right. Thanks, everyone.